Human beings have been enamored by the moon for millennia, yet getting to it is incredibly hard. From 1960 to 2019, 48 out of 109 lunar missions have resulted in complete failure. That is a failure rate of almost 45%. And a few of these were recent too. You'd think we'd make progress in these 60 years and make it easier to land on the moon. But it's still very challenging. That is because there's something strange on the moon that is keeping us from going back. So join us as we explore these mysterious phenomena and find out why the moon isn't letting us go back. We're struggling to land on the moon. In July 1969, humans achieved a remarkable milestone by landing on the moon for the first time through the Apollo 11 mission. However, since the Apollo 17 mission in 1972, we haven't returned. The Apollo 11 landing was a monumental moment in human history, showcasing the power of human determination, engineering, and science. After Apollo 11, six more missions to the moon followed, with five of them achieving successful landings. In total, 12 astronauts walked on the lunar surface. Yet in 1970, Apollo's future missions were grounded. Apollo 17 marked the last human journey to the moon for an indefinite period until the arrival of the Artemis program. Unsurprisingly, the main reason for this lunar hiatus was the overwhelming cost. Initially estimated at $7 billion, the moon missions ultimately incurred a total cost of $20 billion. NASA faced substantial budget cuts, rendering future Apollo missions impractical. While 20 Apollo missions were originally planned, missions focusing on technology and research were abandoned, prioritizing the historic lunar landing. Though humans haven't set foot on the moon since the 1970s, crewed space missions continue regularly. Moreover, unmanned missions to the moon persist. In 2019, India's attempt to land a spacecraft on the moon resulted in an unfortunate lunar litter, spanning multiple kilometers across the surface. But the Indian Space Research Organization made a triumphant return with their next mission. They were the first to successfully land the Chandrayaan-3 lander near the moon's south pole. This victory only came after multiple failures from both India and other countries. For example, this Chandrayaan-3 mission was a stark contrast to a Russian mishap that happened only a few days before. This was when the Lunar 25 mission tragically ceased to exist upon a lunar collision. On August 19, 2023, Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, reported a loss of communication with the Lunar 25 spacecraft after issuing a command to lower its lunar orbit. Subsequent attempts to reach the spacecraft failed, so they concluded that Lunar 25 had crashed. This failure is confusing, given Russia's extensive space experience spanning from the USSR to the present day. While the exact reason remains unknown, we can't deny the challenging circumstances in Russia, such as resource constraints and heightened tensions due to the Ukraine conflict. Those may have played a role. But what about Japan's attempt? Prior to this, Japan's iSpace faced a setback with its Hakutua moon landing mission due to an altitude miscalculation that resulted in fuel depletion. And then in 2019, Israel's Bereshit lander crash-landed due to a gyroscope failure during braking. There was also a loss of communication, preventing ground control from resetting the component. It was speculated that tardigrades, microscopic creatures in a suspended state, might have survived the crash. This was also the same year when India sent its Vikram lander to the moon's surface, but it didn't survive the landing. NASA later shared an image from its Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter revealing the Vikram lander's impact site, with debris scattered over a vast area. These missions remind us that even nearly 60 years after the first successful soft landing on the moon, space exploration remains challenging and risky. Missions to the moon are still a gamble, it's a coin flip if a mission is going to succeed or fail, and recent years have witnessed notable failures. The moon is our closest celestial neighbor, so it makes sense that it's our logical first destination in space. It's a mere 400,000 kilometers from Earth. Yet, only four nations have completed a soft landing, where the spacecraft survives its lunar descent. 
The USSR took the step nearly six decades ago in February of 1966 with the Lunar 9 mission. A few months later, in June 1966, the United States followed suit with Surveyor 1. China joined the club with the Chang'e 3 mission in 2013, and India did so in 2023. Additional missions from Japan, the United Arab Emirates, Israel, Russia, the European Space Agency, Luxembourg, South Korea and Italy have also achieved lunar progress, ranging from flybys to orbiters and impacts, whether deliberate or not. However, the failure rate of these missions cannot be ignored. It's been about 60 years since Luna 9, yet why is it still so hard to land on the moon? Is there a secret to landing on the moon? Is it just trial and error? Or is there something on the moon that's stopping us? Uneven gravity Since the initial lunar satellite scouted Apollo landing sites, scientists noticed an intriguing phenomenon. These probes, while orbiting the moon, occasionally deviated from their course, briefly diving towards the lunar surface before correcting their trajectory and going back up. Scientists wondered why this happened, and it turned out that it was because of gravity. This curious behavior results from the moon's gravitational anomalies. The Earth's gravity is generally uniform across its entire surface, but it's not like that on the moon. The moon's gravity differs across various regions. Some lunar impact basins exhibit unexpectedly strong gravitational pulls due to an uneven distribution of mass beneath the lunar surface. These are known as mascons. The origin of these mysterious mass concentrations or mascons on the moon has confused scientists for some time. Researchers tackled this lunar puzzle by creating simulations of lunar impacts. They explored the geological effect of lunar impacts on the moon's crust and mantle over both short and long time frames. Their findings unveiled the origin of the distinct gravitational pattern. When an asteroid crashes into the moon, it ejects material outward, forming a dense ring of debris around the crater's rim. The impact generates a shockwave that traverses the moon's interior, resonating through its crust. This shockwave produces a counterwave, drawing dense material from the lunar mantle to the surface, forming a central dense region within the crater. Over hundreds of millions of years, the lunar surface cools and settles, shaping the bullseye pattern seen today on the moon's surface. The gravitational differences stem from the thickness of the lunar crust at the time of impact. Impact in regions with thinner crust cause substantial damage, enabling shockwaves to propagate into the denser mantle below. Consequently, more dense material is drawn to the surface, creating a mask on. In contrast, areas with thicker crusts are better equipped to resist impacts and internal disturbances. Now, that's just one strange thing that's happening on the moon. Its south pole houses a secret that makes it more dangerous, but also more alluring to go there. The Moon's South Pole Beneath the Moon's surface, approximately 300 kilometers deep, something massive remains. This mass is below the Moon's South Pole Aitken Basin or Spa. This is an extensive, oval-shaped impact crater on the far side of the Moon, spanning 2,000 kilometers in width and multiple kilometers in depth. Spa is the Moon's oldest basin, formed 4 billion years ago when a celestial object collided with it. To put that into context, the Moon's circumference measures around 11,000 kilometers. But the scariest thing is scientists don't actually know what it is. Data gathered by NASA's GRAIL mission and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter unveiled the presence of additional mass within the Spa Basin on the Moon. Scientists estimated this mass to be at least 10 to the power of 18 kilograms. That's roughly 2 quadrillion tons. While the mass is estimated, its actual size remains uncertain. Researchers attribute its origin to the celestial impact that initially formed the Spa Basin, suggesting it's the remnant core or fragment of the impacting object. Around 4 billion years ago, when the solar system was in its early stages, a massive impact struck the Moon. Normally, the materials of impact sink to the core, but this one didn't. Scientists speculate that the core of this massive object is closer to the Moon's mantle. As a result, you have an uneven distribution of mass inside the Moon. 
and you have a particularly huge chunk near the South Pole. Signs of the moon's mantle were even discovered at the surface by China's lunar lander Chang'e. Another explanation could be a mass concentration of dense oxides left behind as the moon solidified. During this process, heavier metal settled in the moon's interior. However, the theory of oxides settling in only one specific area challenges the global distribution of the moon's magma ocean during its cooling phase. The only way for scientists to know for sure is to send more landers or people to study, which, as we've established, is quite difficult. There are more reasons. Gravity aside, space missions carry substantial risks. Slightly over 50% of lunar missions succeed, and even small satellite missions in Earth's orbit report a success rate ranging from 40% to 70%. Furthermore, compare uncrewed missions with crewed ones. Approximately 98% of crewed missions succeed, largely due to the higher investment in human safety and the dedication of ground staff. Crewed missions benefit from focus support, increased resources, and a willingness to prioritize safety, even if it means accepting delays. All these new moon missions are uncrewed. Now, to say that scientists are less careful because human lives are not at risk would be inaccurate. The pressure to make these missions succeed is still there, as it costs a tremendous amount of money to conduct them. It's just that when human lives are not on the line, investment could be decreased. And furthermore, not having humans is actually a disadvantage because they won't be able to take manual control of the craft in real time and guide it out of any unforeseen situations it encounters, just like Neil Armstrong did during the Apollo mission. Furthermore, the Moon barely has an atmosphere which makes things even worse for landings. When spacecraft return to Earth, they use the atmosphere for deceleration, techniques seen with space shuttles and Apollo capsules. However, the Moon's atmosphere is exceptionally thin, similar to the distant reaches of Earth's atmosphere, where the International Space Station orbits. Consequently, lunar landings rely heavily on propellant to slow down, as there's no atmosphere to provide natural deceleration. This lack of atmosphere leaves astronauts with very little room for error, given the limited propellant supply. NASA provides sufficient fuel for unforeseen events, such as critical flight adjustments. However, the mission cannot tolerate significant mishaps, making lunar landings essentially one-shot opportunities. Moreover, the Moon lacks a GPS system unlike Earth, where GPS offers precise location data. Lunar missions must navigate similarly to the Apollo missions over half a century ago, with onboard computers calculating the thrust required to reach a designated lunar landing site. But if a system error happens, astronauts have to manually control the spacecraft, something uncrewed missions cannot do. Lastly, these new missions have been targeting the Moon's South Pole, a location that is not easy to land on. Past missions settled for the equator or somewhere near there. The Sun is extremely close to the horizon at the South Pole, resulting in very long shadows and a lot of darkness. No GPS and no ability to really see where you're going makes it difficult for anyone trying to get there. But modern technology like terrain relative navigation can help during landings. This tech points a camera at the ground and maps out the terrain during the landing process, allowing the craft to avoid rough terrain like craters and boulders. But we still have a way to go before we can perfect moon landings. Let us know in the comments if you think we'll ever overcome and maybe even trivialize the moon's challenges. Leave a like for more.